Hello, my name is Kevin McCaffrey, originally from Portadown, Northern Ireland. I am a singer-songwriter and I've been living in the magnificent salsa capital of the world, Cali, Colombia, for the last 11 years. This is my story related to scopolamine and how I was robbed of 60 million pesos, around $15,000, while visiting Cartagena. So today is the three-week anniversary of said incident. But the story begins the night before, on Tuesday the 6th of October. I was in the historic centre of Cartagena with my friend. Uh, we were having a drink in a place called Don de Fidel. So it was just after 9pm, 9, 9 uh, we got approached by a couple of girls. And we started chatting, uh, yeah, just for a few minutes. And then after chatting, then before leaving, one of the girls asked me, would I like to meet up? So she asked for my number, I gave her my number. Um, probably about 15 or 20 minutes after that then my friend and I we went back to our hotel in Boca Grande which is where we were staying so the next day my friend he was traveling back to Cali and then I had the next two nights by myself in Cartagena I was staying in Hetsemani uh, luckily I have traveled to so many incredible parts of Colombia and Latin America many of those times traveling alone I like traveling alone particularly as a musician I travel with my guitar I wanted to do some writing on the beach make some videos etc etc so traveling alone is something I, I very much enjoy so uh, the last two days I was by myself and uh, around lunchtime the girl sent me a message on whatsapp so we were talking on whatsapp for yeah for a couple of hours more or less and then finally we agreed to meet up now i had been to Cartagena five times previously and I know Cartagena can be quite suspect, as a lot of country, you know, as a lot of cities are whenever you're traveling. Um, so I'm always very proactive in terms of security and being careful. So the original idea was for us both to meet at my hotel where we'd have some food. And then, you know, we would go out and have, take a walk around the historic center. That was the initial idea. So the girl gets to my I was staying in a place called Casa Lopez. The girl gets to the hotel just after 6 p.m. And, okay, just to give some context here, in Colombia we have an, ident an ID card called a cédula, which is your ID card, basically. Um, and you also have what's called a contraseña. Contraseña is almost like your provisional. Uh, you know, so if you're waiting for a replacement or if you've lost it or something, you have a contraseña. So when the girl gets to the reception at the, at the hotel lobby, um, she said, I only have my contraseña, but they wouldn't allow her in. Normally, it's, it's a totally valid form of ID. However, in, I guess, these COVID times, they're a lot more strict. So she wasn't allowed into the hotel with her contraseña. So I said, look, don't worry about it. We'll find somewhere else to eat. So we took a walk from my hotel in Hetsemane over towards the historic center. We eventually got to a very, very common area for tourists which is near but right by the clock this is around 6 30 p.m very public place it was a beautiful evening and um, so again what i've done many times before and many other tourists every day is you know we just sit on one of the benches near the clock so we sat down with the girl and um, we asked you know i asked for we got a, a drink from one of the street vendors we were talking about for about 10 minutes getting to know each other things were going very well then after about yeah, about this 10 minute period, the girl says, look, I recognize one of my friends over there. Do you mind if she comes and says hello? I said, yeah, no problem at all. So her friend uh, came and sat down with us probably for about five minutes. And then that is literally the last thing I remember of being at that spot. So just, around, you know, just after 6.30, probably around 6.40 p.m. The next thing I remember hours later, I was totally disorientated, dizzy, nauseous in the back of a taxi um, eventually got to my hotel this is where I start to regain my memory I I do remember the taxi driver saying look he taxi driver was quite agitated said look this guy's been drugged he doesn't know where he's going luckily he recognized the street after you know, driving around half the night um, but basically he needs to pay me you know I've been taking him around so luckily I had a little bit of cash in my room in the hotel so, you know, I was starting to finally get my wits about me, went, went upstairs, got the money, paid the taxi driver, and then basically went up to my room and fell asleep. So the next morning I wake up, um, realize, you know, checking everything, no phone, phone was gone. Incredibly, I had my wallet, but I only had my ID card in my wallet, um, so there was no bank card and, you know, the little cash that I had 
take it out with me the previous night. So immediately I went downstairs, explained to the hotel what had happened, got on to their computer. They were extremely helpful, by the way. Um, so I got onto my online banking, saw all of these you know, very strange transactions and, and um, electronic transactions for various amounts. And then still in my quite groggy state from the night before, I thought my balance said 41 million pesos, so around $10,000. I was thinking, oh, you know, this is, you know, they've taken around 20 million pesos, $5,000, but I just kept saying to myself, look, you're okay, at least you're okay, at least you're okay, you know, there's no, no harm done here. So very calmly call up the bank, cancelled my card and then luckily I had my credit card in my room so I you know that was my emergency my emergency card luckily otherwise I would have been stranded so I with my credit card I went into, into the city centre bought a new phone went to the bank then of course explained what had happened and of course asking for answers you know how did the bank not help me whenever I'm a victim uh, of, of such a crime and the bank just from the first minute and until right now they have been totally totally um, washing their hands of the situation, offering no support, no empathy. They just said, oh, you need to make a report online, which of course is obviously what I did. Um, and all we can do for now is give you a new debit card. So I said, okay, please give me the new debit card. Um, and I asked for the, a list of the transactions. And um, I asked how much was in my account. So the lady says, um, sir, you have... 41,000 pesos in your account. So from having what I thought was $10,000 to $10, that was the only moment where it was real despair in these last three weeks. Just like, you know, could not believe. So all of my money, you know, I'm a teacher, um, 10 years of teaching, that was all of my savings. Just gone like that. So with the list of transactions, I looked at all the trans 17 transactions in just over two hours. Some of the first few were um, in, you know, ATM withdrawals, but the vast majority were electronic payments made uh, with my card. And most of them were in this restaurant. So from 9.53 p.m. to 10.01 p.m., they made seven transactions of almost 50 million pesos. So around $12,000, seven different transactions. So nine million pesos. 6 million pesos, 8 million pesos, 9 million pesos again. So just totally rinsed my account. The majority of it in this one, one supposed restaurant. And then a little bit over the 15 minutes later, there was another 6 million pesos, around $1,500 in a drugstore. So, you know, totally crazy. The bank, there was no red flags and the bank didn't stop this. So, of course, I asked to speak to the bank manager at the same story. If someone's used your, uh, your account, I'm sure. I'm sorry. There's nothing, nothing you can do. Nothing we can do as a bank. You're responsible for your card. That's all they told me. So the bank was a disaster, of course. And the next thing was I had to go to the police station. The police station in the historic centre, about five blocks from the incident where the incident took place. I went there you know, with all of the transactions, with the physical description of the person of the girl that I'd met, knowing, of course, that she'd been in the hotel, so they'd have video footage. Um, one of them, after giving the physical description, they, they showed me a picture. So it was this girl and two other women in face masks. So this is something that had obviously happened recently. And one of the police officers actually laughed at me. I couldn't believe it. I was there in the police station for just over an hour. There was about around 10 or 12 officers. I thought they were processing my case with all of this, you know, lots of information. After about an hour, I said, okay, so what's, you know, what are we doing with my kids? Said, oh, well, we can't do anything here. I was like, what do you mean you can't do anything? Look at all this information. You know who it is. You've even showed me a picture. No, we, we can't do anything here. You have to make an independent inquiry, which is called the Fiscalia, which is a branch of the government. I just could not believe it. You know, all of this information, they're in their hands, literally. Um, and of course, I mean, there was this girl, but this was an organized crime of many people. She was involved with, a, a, you know, probably at least another 10 people. So all of this information, you know, so that was it. End of story with, 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 um, with the police. And that was pretty much my experience in Cartagena. The next day I went back to Cali, of course, tried to follow up my, my case with the bank and with the, with, you know, the Fiscalia, 
to the criminal investigation that until now they're telling me there are no advances despite the fact that I've given so much evidence. I finally got a response from the bank saying that, Dear Mr McCaffrey, yes, we can see clearly that you yourself did not make these transactions. You were a victim of fraud. However, we are unwilling to offer any type of compensation. That's basically the response from the bank. So I talked to two lawyers last week. I'm talking to, you know, I'm going to go with one particular lawyer. We're going to have a civil law suit against the bank. And then, of course, the criminal law suit trying to, to bring to justice all of the people that were involved. The lawyers that I've spoken to, anyone that I've spoken to that work in banks, have told me clearly this is a very high level organized crime whereby, okay, this girl, and maybe her friend involved, maybe the vendors. But, I mean, we're talking a local business, a restaurant, the drugstores. And of course, the bank, someone on the inside allowing these transactions to go through, totally crazy. And the police, the fact that they have done absolutely nothing to no, until now. So that's a, you know, a more or less a summary of the whole case. Despite everything that's happened, I just want to say that I actually wake up every single day from the incident. I'm determined to turn this into a very, very positive um, incident. So, you know, whatever happened to me, whenever something like this happens, it obviously shakes you up. But since it happens every single day, I've been waking up with a sense, you know, a sense of relief, thankful for nothing more serious happened. Scopolamine is a very, very serious drug. It kills people. People end up in comas. People do not recover uh, fully from the psychological and the physical trauma of what, what happens. People end up, you know, in parks and everything. I was one of the lucky victims. I woke up in my hotel room. Okay, I lost all of this money. You know, maybe I'll get it back. Maybe I won't. So really through my case, I'm determined to use this in a positive way. I want to use it through my music. I want to, I've already started writing and documenting it. The idea eventually is actually to do a documentary film, creating awareness about scopolamine. I want to create campaigns on social media. And of course, bring to light the high level of criminal organization of what's going on, allow this to happen. And finally, of course, to, to encourage people to be very, very careful when visiting Cartagena. So that is really my story about scopolamine. Uh, I appreciate every single person uh, that has had, you know that has taken the time to listen to my story. Please share and um, let's make sure that this happens to as little amount of people as possible. These type of crimes happen far too often in Colombia and we need to stop. We need to put a stop to this. We need to create awareness. So if you have any questions or you would like to help in any way, um, by creating awareness or sharing your stories, things like that, please let me know in the comments below or send me a private message and I'd be more than willing to get back to you. So thanks very much again for listening. Take care.